Uh, welcome everybody. And uh, during tonight's talk, we're going to answer your questions in the chat box. So you might want to tell us what city you're from now, so we all know where the chat box is. Um, my name is Lorna Vanderhaeg. I'm a natural health expert. I've been researching and writing on nutritional medicine for over 40 years now. I'm the author of 13 books. And the first two books I wrote, the very first book I wrote way back in 1998 was called The Immune System Cure, which is in six countries and translated into four languages and was a smashing success at the time, uh, probably because we didn't know a lot about the immune system back in 1998, and we've learned a lot since then. Um, my second book was Healthy Immunity. And so the subject of tonight's talk is going to be around the immune system and allergies and how we can get those allergies under control. Um, I have a master's in science in nutrition. I have a second degree in biochemistry. Uh, many of you know me from my many, many years with my women's natural health product line at Lorna Vanderhaeg Health Solutions. So if you're one of those people on the call tonight, you can always ask me questions about your hormones too, if you really need help there. So tonight we're going to talk about allergies. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview on the immune system and how your immune system works so that you can understand what's really going on uh, with allergies. So allergies, they occur because your immune system uh, assumes that the substance it's seeing, mainly, mainly a harmless substance like a cat, cat hair or a dog hair or feathers or dust or a food, the immune system for some reason decides to mistake that that's a harmless substance and views it as a dangerous invader. And the immune system's job is to seek, recognize, and destroy invaders or harmful uh, substances that enter into the body. So when it thinks that an allergen, a, a normally harmless subject, is an invader, it really becomes aggressive. And allergies can be mild. The symptoms can be very mild. They can be moderate or they can be life-threatening and so life-threatening that people can die from them. So some of the symptoms that you may experience when you have allergies are things like headaches and sneezing, runny nose or eyes, itchy eyes, itchy skin, intestinal issues like food allergies cause all kinds of gut problems from constipation and diarrhea, even vomiting can occur, but a lot of bloating and gas as well. Uh, skin rashes are also a sign of allergies, things like eczema, also called atopic dermatitis, hives. Uh, in the worst case scenario, the symptom you get from your allergy is death. And if you're like me, I have an anaphylactic allergy to uh, black hornets. And so when I am, if I'm ever stung by them, which I have been twice in my life, I have to use an EpiPen to control the allergic reaction because it's so severe. Uh, there are two types of asthma. There is a type of asthma that's related to allergies. And it, the one thing that most of us don't know is that many, many years of allergies to certain agents can actually contribute to things like arthritis, pain, weight gain, autoimmune diseases, and more. So there really is a lot going on when we're talking about allergies. And, you know, a lot of people I know who, for example, had true gluten allergies, but ate gluten for most of their life will have real serious IBS or possibly even rheumatoid arthritis as a result of their allergies that they had as a child. And we're going to talk a lot about children because allergies are initiated often when the baby is very, very new. And so we're going to talk about how that is all interrelated to the allergies that you have as you age. So why do we get allergies and why would the body that is the immune system that's normally designed to protect you from invaders all of a sudden become so voracious that it causes these terrible uh, allergic symptoms, some of which can be very, very deadly. And the reason why is because this, the system in the body, the immune reaction that is the immune reaction against allergens is very similar to the immune reaction that the body developed to deal with parasitic infections. 
And of course, parasitic infections would be very, very deadly, especially in the days when we didn't have antibiotics to treat them or when the water wasn't clean or when you really just did not have the ability of the kind of hygiene that we have today. So what happened is the immune system developed this response to parasites that is almost identical as the allergic reaction. And so it is a very powerful uh, reaction that occurs. This all happened because of the whole survival of the fittest law and early day people survived when the immune system killed parasites so they could reproduce and have more children. Uh, the interesting fact is that in developing countries like ours, uh, we have developing countries not like ours uh, have more allergic reactions and more allergic occurrence compared to developed countries like ours. So the reason why that could be, we're gonna talk a lot about this is hygiene and there is another hypothesis around allergies and the reason why we develop allergies which is all about our homes being too clean we now know that vitamin d3 deficiency is linked to an increase in allergies and there are more anaphylactic allergies in the north so the further away we are from the equator like us who live in canada we have more vitamin D3 deficiencies. We have more serious forms of allergies. We also have more autoimmune disease, which I'm gonna explain what that means in a moment. And of course, one of the other challenges that we've had is that uh, we, when we introduce foods to our children, when they're babies, when they're infants, there are these uh, guidelines that were put in place about how to introduce food into the diet of children. And that exposure to potential allergens has been limited by these food, uh, food introduction guidelines. And all of these things con are contributing to the fact that the immune system is acting really in a voracious overactive manner against substances that should be classified as harmless to the body. And it really all starts with babies. And well, really it starts with pregnant moms because we know that 70% of the immune system sits in the gut, and we know that a pregnant mom shares a lot of her immunity with the baby. And so we now know that things like probiotics, cesarean sections, all of these types of things, whether we breastfeed or don't, contribute to the potential risk that a child may develop allergies in the future. And so we have a type of immunity called passive immunity, and we have about four different kinds of immunity, but I'm going to talk about passive immunity because it plays a role in regards to uh, developing allergies. So when we're born, uh, we have a little bit of immunity. We borrowed that immune system from our mom. We received antibodies through the placenta and breast milk, which is only temporary because the immune system develops through exposure to dirt, viruses, bacteria, things in our environment. So when a baby's born, they're pretty much a clean slate and their immune system has to develop. So the more colds they get, the more dirt, the more dog hair, those types of things that they're exposed to, uh, the more their immune system develops and learns how to protect us against things in the future. And so, of course, we now know that some of the guidelines that were put in place, you know, that you only gave babies certain foods at certain times have actually created some very serious allergies, anaphylactic allergies uh, to things like peanuts and to six of the most common allergic foods. So when we look at children, we have that hygiene hypothesis. So we've got to let them eat dirt and the dog slobbering on your baby's face is actually a good thing. Uh, we also know that vitamin D deficiency plays a huge role. So every single mom should be taking vitamin D3 and when her baby is born, they should be taking vitamin D3 as well. And hopefully every person who's on tonight's call is also taking vitamin D3. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. They actually found that when they did early exposure to infants with things like peanuts or things like eggs and other allergens before they were six months old or around the time that they were six months old, they were able to dramatically reduce allergies in the future. So what is an allergen? An allergen is a substance which gives rise to an allergy. So what would they look like? 
Well, we have skin contact allergies, things like pet dander when it touches you, pollen touching you, poisonous plants also can create an allergic reaction. Some people have allergies to latex gloves. It's very common in nurses and doctors and people in the hospital. Then we have injection allergies, which is what I have. I have an, an allergy to being stung by black hornets. And then of course, some medications when they're introduced into the body by injection, people will also have an allergic reaction. Then we also have the ingestion or eating of substances that causes allergies. And of course, this is one of the really challenging things to deal with is when you have allergens to foods, uh, you know, allergens that are really allergies that are really severe to things like nuts and shellfish, you see those pretty much right away. But a lot of people have delayed food sensitivities or they have food allergies to things like they're fine if they just have wheat, but if they have wheat and dairy together or wheat, dairy and eggs, or if they eat tomatoes and wheat together, they have a worsening of their allergic response. And then we have some people who just have sensitivities. And so you initially have a sensitivity and then over time that sensitivity to a food or another substance becomes more serious and you develop a full-blown allergy. And we often see this happen with people to shellfish allergies where initially they had mild symptoms and then after multiple exposures to shellfish, they'll have a very serious reaction. Then we have the inhalation allergens. Those are things like pollen that you're uh, breathing in in the spring or grass pollens or tree pollens. Then people who have allergies to dust, mold and mildew, and of course, animals. Uh, that's another big one where you have, you know, dog, cat or uh, horse allergies. The major allergens, so in North America, we call these the nine priority allergens. And you'll often see companies list on their labels that their product does not contain these very common allergens. So things like milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, which are walnuts, almonds, pine nuts, Brazil nuts, pecans. Then another very common allergen is sesame, uh, fish and shellfish, um, crustaceans and mollusks, which are all kind of combined into the same category. So these are some of the substances that you can be allergic to, but you could be allergic to a lot more. Uh, there are people who are, med who are allergic to medications like sulfa drugs and um, antibiotics. Um, those, of course, are a little bit dangerous, especially if you need those uh, particular medications. So the immune system has multiple different ways to defend you from invaders. And we have our thymus gland uh, that sits right behind our breastbone in our chest. We have things like bone marrow. We have our spleen. We have the tonsils and the adenoids that protect us. But then we also have... Um, the immune system is sitting in our saliva, it's sitting in our tears. Our skin is the largest immune organ in the body. We also have mucus, not only in our throat, but also in our gut to help protect us where it traps dirt and microbes. We have stomach acid that's part of our immune system as well because it's designed to kill off things that actually got past all the other defense mechanisms. And as I said a little bit earlier, you know, 70% of your immune system sits in your gut. And that makes sense because probably a lot of the um, harmful substances that we consume, we consume through eating. And think about how many times a day you touch your finger to the corner of your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. And every time you do that, you are introducing uh, potential invaders or pathogens or bacteria or fungus or viruses into the body. So the body has a great defense for that. The immune system has tears that are full of these enzymes that are part of the immune system to kill all of these things off. And for those of you who have allergies, you know that when you are exposed to an allergen, say you had a cat hair on your finger and you rub your eye, your eye will get red, there will be lots of fluid that's produced um, because the body's trying to get rid of that substance that they view as a harmful invader. 
So we've got a great system here. In the winter months, we tend to see a lot of allergens in our house. So we have more allergies that are related to our home. And that's because we turn on the heat, the place gets dry, our eyes dry out, our mouth dries out. And so then you don't have all of these immune factors that are found in your tears and your saliva. So of course, washing hands is important and keeping them out of your eyes, nose and mouth, which we know is very challenging. So when we look at the gut, as I said, when I wrote the book, The Immune System Cure back in 1998, this information about the immune system in the gut was not known. And so if you happen to have an old copy of that book, this will not be in there. But now we know that the majority of the immune system resides in the digestive tract. And we now also know that the gut talks to the brain, it talks to the skin, and it is involved in our hormone function. We know that when people start to have uh, digestive problems, so gas, burping, bloating, constipation, and diarrhea, that we really need to pay attention to this because this is telling us that our immune system is now not going to work as well also. And diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and MS are now realized to start in the digestive tract. So if you've got the symptoms of digestive problems, you really want to get those sorted out. So this whole gut brain access um, is associated with your immune system. And we want to get really healthy gut bacteria happening in your digestive tract if you have especially if you have allergies or if your child has allergies. So although I'm going to talk a lot about what's going on with kids initially, uh, this also relates to adults too. So the gut, the digestive tract, we have um, what we call a permeable digestive tract. So nutrients can cross over it, water can cross over it, ions. And the digestive tract, when it's healthy, is very, very good at stopping bad things from crossing through. But what we know in people with allergies is that they often have what we call a leaky gut. So instead of their gut being very smart and only letting certain things through, now all of a sudden because of what's going on in the digestive tract, we end up with bacteria, yeast, and other allergens crossing through the digestive tract into the body where it should not go and even more important, <coughs> we see things like undigested food particles or tiny particles of food that should never ever cross through that digestive tract ending up in the body. And this is where they believe that there is a direct connection to allergens because now the immune system would say, hey, what are you doing over here? You're supposed to be in the gut. And now it creates this allergic kind of inflammatory response that we see happening. And we now know that that is directly related to things like arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, Parkinson's, and more serious health concerns. So we've got to restore our intestinal barrier functions. And that is the key to preventing and treating allergies, asthma, and especially eczema. And the probiotic that you want to take is called Lactobacillus salivarius, and its designated strain is LS01. And I want to make a recommendation that when you're buying probiotic supplements, that you look for that little designation at the end, the numbers, because that is the strain. And that strain designation is key in knowing that the type of probiotic that you've bought that it actually is going to work against the problem that you're trying to solve. So we want to get a good, healthy gut. And so if you're on the call and you've got gas, burping, bloating, constipation, or diarrhea, you already know that you've got some challenges going on because your digestive tract is not working well. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about histamine. So people who have allergies buy antihistamines. And what do antihistamines do? They shut off the way that histamine works. Well, histamine is a good guy and a bad guy. So it's one of those friend or foe, and it can have beneficial actions in the body. But when it is working in an out of control scenario, that's when we start to see a lot of allergic symptoms. So say you're exposed to the pollen from a dandelion or from a cat hair or a dog hair or some dust, 
And what happens, it enters your eyes, nose, and lungs, and that causes the immune system to go, hey, these aren't supposed to be here. When they become in contact with the mucous membranes in the body, this then notifies the immune system to respond with mast cells. And these cells release histamine. And if you've ever had a glass of red wine and your skin got bright red and flushed, that's histamine. If you've ever had an allergic reaction to something and all of a sudden your eyes just started to pour water and your nose was running and you started to um, sneeze, 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 this is because histamine is trying to get rid of the pollen or whatever agent it is that you're exposed to. Eventually your liver is supposed to break that histamine down and the whole process starts all over again. And normally your immune system would calm down. But in people who have allergies, especially chronic allergies, uh, the immune system doesn't calm down. It stays in this overactive state. So I'm gonna tell you in a little bit how to get histamine and your allergies under control using some natural substances. But I wanna talk about eczema first because the interesting thing about eczema, it's like the, the numbers are huge. It's like 90% of children before the age of five will have eczema. How severe that eczema is. So eczema is, and I'll show you a photo of what eczema looks like. This is that red, terribly itchy rash. It is caused by allergies. It's an allergic reaction. We call it atopic dermatitis. But I'll go back to this because one of the things they found in kids who have asthma uh, is that originally they often had eczema. And then often eczema can lead to food allergies and then it can lead to rhinitis. That's that chronic drippy runny nose. And you know, some adults actually have one nostril longer than the other from constantly rubbing their nose or doing this, they have a little crease on the top of their new nose. And then of course, the next stage is asthma. So we call this the allergic march. So if you've got a child with eczema, uh, you should know that of course, they're already in this state of potentially ending up with more serious or long-term allergies. And these, these pictures of eczema are just terrible. The reason why I got involved in the natural medicine industry was because my oldest daughter, when I stopped breastfeeding her, she developed this head to toe eczema and it was terrible, itchy, itchy, awful. Uh, we went from pediatrician to skin specialist and all they could recommend was cortisone creams. I read the side effects of those and realized that probably wasn't going to be a solution. And I kept asking the pediatrician, don't you think it's something she's eating? Don't you think she's allergic to something? Because she had beautiful skin when I was breastfeeding her. And then of course we started introducing all these foods. At the time they told me no. So I went into a health food store for the very first time. And the woman in the health food store told me what was going on with my daughter's uh, eczema. And we solved that problem very, very quickly. And I was so incredibly excited at the prospect that natural medicine uh, could have these dramatic changes. And so I decided that I was going to go back to university, get a degree, and really understand how these natural remedies worked in the body. And really, it's about getting to the source of the problem, because Often what we do is use a lot of band-aids, antihistamines, we use cortisone creams, but nothing really ever solves the problem until you get to the root of the problem, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. So why is our immune system letting us down? I mean, the immune system should be seeking, recognizing and destroying harmful invaders, cancer cells, and keeping our immune system nice and balanced. Uh, unfortunately, because of our inadequate nutrition, too much sugar, um, antibiotic overuse and abuse. And I really want to stress that when you go to the doctor and, the, you know, they look in your throat and they tell you, oh, you know, you've got a, an infection, we're going to write you a prescription. We really should not be taking antibiotics, which are designed to treat bacteria until we have seen the test result come back. So if they've done a throat swab of your throat, we really shouldn't start those antibiotics until we find out was the throat swab positive for bacteria because often it's a virus and antibiotics do not work against viruses. And one of the problems with antibiotics 
is they're wonderful when we need them, but they also kill off all our good bacteria in the digestive tract. And this is really a problem for a lot of people who have, say, recurring urinary tract infections because they're often given a lot of antibiotics. Women who have cesarean sections are also given antibiotics and sometimes they're given IV. And if the baby hasn't been born yet, that could be their first exposure. Toxic overload and environmental pollution. I can't say enough about this. Stress, our emotional status and obesity play a role in causing our immune system to become dysfunctional. And of course, we've just experienced very virulent viruses um, that happened a couple of years ago. And now the onslaught of people being uh, locked down and not exposed to viruses and bacteria and other germs and bugs over the last few years. And, you know, during that time, I had a grandson who was, who was born uh, during the uh, lockdown. So that child didn't see anybody other than the immediate family and so he did not get exposed to all the viruses, bacteria, and other agents that you would normally get exposed to in the first two years of life. So our children received their lifetime toxic load, about 35% of their lifetime toxic load of an environmental pollutants by the age of five. And this can be things from plastics, it can be pesticides, it can be things like fluoride, it can be a whole host of agents but this is a really sad fact that our children are really suffering with an environmental load that is just quite toxic. And they're little and they're growing and they need to have a healthy immune system. I'm gonna show you a study where 90 to 95% of cancers are environmental or lifestyle based. And this is also, you know, we think about, we talk about genetics and cancer or genetics in certain diseases, but in this particular case, 90 to 95% of all cancers that we get are solely from the environment or our lifestyle. One in six bacterial infections are now antibiotic resistant, and that is because we are using antibiotics when we don't need them. And that means the germs are starting to beat the drugs, and that's a very dangerous situation. One of the things I was really quite shocked about when I started doing research again um, for this presentation is that we are spraying antibiotics on food, on produce, and streptomycin and tetracycline, which are both very common antibiotics, are sprayed on things like lettuce, creating bacterial resistant to the drugs in humans. And so this is one of the reasons why I continually recommend that whenever we can, that we buy organic food to reduce our toxic load of pesticides or fungicides, but also potentially antibiotics that we don't even know are being sprayed on our food. We also know that depression, anxiety, and loneliness are also contributing to this dysfunctional immune system. And the reason why I keep going back to the dysfunctional immune system is because allergies and asthma are caused by a dysfunctional immune system. And again, I cannot stress enough, we're too clean and dirt is actually good. And some germs are our friend, especially when we're trying to teach our immune system how to function in this world. And I like this slide because um, this is a macrophage. So this macrophage is engulfing uh, bacteria actually. And what they found in these studies, so they took macrophage cells, they allowed them to do their job. They're called big eating cells. So they literally engulf things that they think need to be eliminated from the body. But then they fed the participants sugar. And one teaspoon of white sugar actually shut off these macrophages for up to five hours. So you really want to avoid sugar at all costs. Uh, if you want to have a healthy immune system. And in this particular study, they gave people syrups, sugar, uh, high fructose corn syrup. They gave them honey. They gave them a whole host of sweeteners and showed that they all had this negative effect on the immune system, literally becoming like a giant slug for several hours. This is a study I was talking about earlier about cancer causes and I put the, um, the reference right on the slide for you because it's actually quite a very interesting study that was done. And they found that 90 to 95% of cancers were caused by 
diet, 30 to 35% were diet related. Some were tobacco, which it's shocking that we're still smoking today. And now with teenagers vaping, uh, that's creating even more problems. Infections, obesity, alcohol, and other causes. Genes were a very tiny portion of why we get cancer. So what that is telling you is that food is your medicine and we can literally change this incredibly body, this incredible immune system's function in the body by changing our diet and getting that gut really back healthy again. So let's talk about inflammation because it is another contributing factor to allergies. And inflammation is the immune system's first response against injury or invaders. So if you slip and fall on the ice and you sprain your ankle, you're going to see the inflammation because your ankle is going to get swollen, it's going to get red, it's going to get painful, and it's going to get hot. And that's the immune system working to clean up all the damage and the debris in the area. It's also designed to force you to sit in a chair, put your foot up and put some ice on it to allow it time to heal. So short-term inflammation is, good, is a good thing. It's designed by the immune system to destroy invaders and to repair damage. But long-term or inflammation that you can't see, so inflammation in your gut, inflammation in your joints, inflammation caused by allergies, these things eventually cause damage to other body systems. And if you ever see a word with itis on the end, I-T-I-S, itis means inflammation. So arthritis is inflammation of the joints. Myocarditis is inflammation of the heart. Uh, bronchitis is inflammation of the lungs and colitis. So you get the idea. So any of those itises are telling you that you have inflammation. So today we know that the average North American is full of inflammation. And we know that inflammation is really a silent killer. So what is autoimmunity? So I talked a little bit about this at the beginning that when people are vitamin D3 deficient, that we have more allergies in the North because we tend to have more vitamin D deficiencies in the North because we don't get a lot of sunshine. If you're like the rest of the country, probably from October to April, you're covered up in a parka with a hood and you're not exposed to the sun. We need 20 minutes of naked body exposure to make enough vitamin D3. And considering that most of us are slathering on sunscreen or hiding from the sun these days, we are not making enough vitamin D3 in the body. And this is why I truly believe that every single person needs to take a vitamin D3 supplement from the time they are born. Don't wait. If you've got kids at home or grandkids, they need vitamin D3, especially if they have allergies, because there's a direct link between allergy um, severity and vitamin D3 deficiency. So autoimmune diseases are also linked to a vitamin D3 deficiency. But autoimmune diseases are seriously on the rise. What is happening with them? So like I said earlier, your immune system is supposed to act in a way to protect you. But sometimes the immune system gets confused like it does with allergies. It also gets confused with autoimmune diseases. And we know that when the immune system becomes confused, sometimes it turns around and it attacks the body and we end up with these autoimmune diseases, things like multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, lupus, um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves disease, these things, psoriasis is another autoimmune disorder. So this is where the immune system, instead of attacking an invader, turns on the body and attacks the tissues of the body it is supposed to protect. Nearly 80% of those afflicted with autoimmune diseases are female, and there is thought to be a hormone connection as well as why women are developing these autoimmune conditions. Uh, we've got to have a healthy gut. It's absolutely key. And like allergies, autoimmune diseases can be mild to very, very damaging. And uh, leaky gut is associated with the development of autoimmunity in the body. So I want to talk a little bit about this immune balance. So you will never hear me recommend immune boosters. And there's a reason why. 
the immune system has to stay balanced. If it becomes overactive, you end up with allergies, autoimmune disorders, inflammation and pain, and potential destruction of organs. And when this is all happening, because we are under so much stress and exposed to so many environmental poisons that what's happening is our cortisol, which is our stress hormone goes up. And this plays a direct role in the immune system and how severe the reactions you're going to have to allergens. So when your stress levels go up, on the flip side of the immune system, your DHEA, which is your anti-aging hormone, it is also a very important immune hormone. It is also the hormone that is used to make all your other hormones in the body. So cortisol goes up, DHEA drops. Now, when that happens, you end up with asthma, eczema, hives, allergies, hay fever, autoimmune disorders, and inflammation. So those we call overactive immune responses. Then on the flip side, when your DHEA drops, we get more cancer, we get more chronic infections like HPV infections and herpes and, and colds and flu, and we get rapid aging. So this is what's happening. So you don't want to take immune boosters because boosting the immune system will make these uh, potent, these conditions worse. We want to use immune balancing agents. And that's what I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes about how to get these allergies under control. So you want your immune system in harmony. And when your immune system is in harmony, your inflammation is low. You can have a CRP test, which will test your inflammatory factors. You can have a hemoglobin A1C, which will also test your inflammatory factors. You can have immune markers done as well, although most doctors don't like to do it, but I know that they'll do a CRP quite readily. So you want to have this balance. And when your immune system is in balance, you don't have allergies, you don't have autoimmune diseases, uh, you don't have cancer, your immune system is strong, it's doing its job properly, it's not too overactive, and it's not too underactive, and kind of like, you know, um, the Goldilocks and the three bears, it is just right. And that's what we're aiming for. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is eat more vegetables and fruit. And the reason why is because when you eat vegetables and fruit, they are actually contain prebiotics and prebiotics feed the probiotics in your gut. So they make that microbiome, that area inside your gut that is full of just so many good, healthy bacteria. It also supports your immune system. So remember the gut, the brain and the immune system all talk to one another. And one of the best ways to get that happening is to eat as many vegetables and fruit that you can every day. And that vegetable fiber is a prebiotic that feeds your probiotics. Um, probiotic foods are also essential. So when you go to buy a probiotic, uh, yogurt in the grocery store, make sure it actually contains a probiotic strain and that is organic. You want to have an organic probiotic rich yogurt that will give you good guys. Some of them are not, don't have any probiotics in them. They're full of sugar and gelatin and they would not be classified as healing food. You also want to sleep more and that's because while you sleep, the immune system is making antibodies and antibodies are made by your immune system. So if you were a kid like me and you got mumps, your immune system created antibodies. So every time your body sees mumps in the environment again, it says, hey, I know what mumps are because I created antibodies and those antibodies will kill off mumps before you develop them again. And one of the things that happens when you sleep is that the immune system makes the antibodies and also your cortisol levels lower. So the more good solid sleep you get, the better it is for your immune system. And when you have less sleep and poor sleep or poor quality sleep, inflammation in the body ramps up and we have a whole host of inflammatory type conditions. And like this poor woman who's in the image right now who obviously is allergic to chamomile flowers 
um, with the red eyes and the itchy nose, um, that will make things will just simply be worse. One of the great things about living in Vancouver is that it rains a lot during allergy season and that keeps the pollen on the ground instead of floating around in your face. And people who don't have any allergies here in the spring may go to Toronto where they have much drier climate in the spring and end up with allergic reactions there. So rain is actually a good thing. So what are we going to do and what are we going to talk about in order to get those allergies under control? Because if you're like me, you don't want to use um, antihistamines, over-the-counter antihistamines. And frankly, they are simply a Band-Aid because you have to use them often during allergy season. And if you have food allergies, they don't work. And if you have other allergies that are not inhalant allergies, they also don't work very well. And some of them have terrible side effects as well as making you feel groggy or hyper, one of the two, because some of these over-the-counter antihistamines will have ephedra-like agents in them, which make you feel like you are on a bit of speed. So back in 1998, well, actually earlier than that, I had the wonderful pleasure of meeting the scientists who developed Modicare. And uh, I went to South Africa and met with the original uh, scientist who uh, discovered Modicare along from the people who lived in the environment there. And I got to uh, really get to know the researchers at uh, Stellenbosch University who helped to do all the research on this product. It is a very special product. And you know, it wasn't until the bad virus that was here a couple of years ago that I remembered that I had written the immune system cure. It was quite funny because it was such a long time ago and someone had emailed me and said, didn't you write a book on the immune system? And uh, of course, you know, it was a perfect time to start talking about the immune system again. So Modicare is very unique. It is a combination of a plant-based ingredient called beta cytosterol and beta cytosterol in Modicare has a little uh, beta cytosterol in glucoside attached to it. So it's a very unique molecule. Um, it has to be in this 100 to 1 ratio in order for it to work. They have over 25 years of clinical research in humans. And the research covers a whole gamut of conditions because we just had a little talk about what your immune system does. And now you understand that if you balance the immune system, you're really going to solve a lot of your health conditions. And uh, so what have they researched? So Modicare has been found to modulate or balance the immune system, literally take that teeter-totter and bring down the inflammatory side. It lowers cortisol and it increases your DHEA but only to the level that you need to have it raised to for balance in the immune system. It controls destructive inflammation. Um, it controls allergies. And I'm going to tell you about a study that was just recently done in children. Um, Logicare has been used for, you know, some pretty serious allergies in adults. I remember, uh, you know, we've got just hundreds and hundreds of testimonials because it's been in the marketplace for such a long time. But, you know, we had people who their children wanted to have a dog and they couldn't have a dog because their father had allergies to dog, dog hair. And uh, what they did is they went on Modicare and within about three to six months, I can't remember how long it was now, they were able to get a family dog because as long as dad stayed on Modicare, he didn't have any, sim any um, allergy symptoms or I would call them allergy reactions. We also have a, a recent testimonial from somebody who was able to get off their very serious medications for rheumatoid arthritis. Um, Modicare also helps you battle viral infections and the work that was originally done way back in 1998 uh, was done on HIV, which of course is one of the most serious uh, viral infections. They also have some new research on HPV which is the human papillomavirus. We know the human papillomavirus is associated with terrible um, HPV lesions in women and also cervical dysplasia or cervical cancer. We also know that HPV is involved in throat cancer as well. 
Uh, there's been research done using Modicare for herpes and for respiratory infections. And the research around arthritis is really quite compelling. Uh, it's also been researched in marathon runners. Marathon runners tend to get a lot of colds and flus and allergic reactions. And it was able to show that we could bring that cortisol down, elevate that DHEA and balance all those really powerful inflammatory immune factors and put them right back where they need to be. Uh, these sterols are not the same sterols that you would see in a cholesterol lowering product. So don't ever think that if you buy a sterile that just says sterols for lowering cholesterol, that you're going to get this immune benefit. You will not. This is a very specific, uh, what I call a daily immune system supplement. Because if you have allergies and you're used to popping an antihistamine and feeling better 20 minutes later, that is not how this works. This works to get your immune system back where it belongs so that your allergies are either eliminated over time or completely under control, which is what we want to have happen. And you get all the other wonderful benefits that Modicare gives you as well. And remember that asthma is also, um, associated. there's two types of asthma. There's the asthma that's associated with allergies. So these are kids generally, sometimes adults that have allergies to inhalant or foods or other things, and they develop the respiratory, the real serious lung wheezing problem. Then we have some people who have asthma that's associated with the cold or stress. That's a different kind of asthma. But for people who have the allergy associated asthma, Modicare is an absolute gift. And moms who've had to deal with children who are gasping for air and using puffers are very, very thankful after their child has been on Modicare for a couple of months. So in this study, it was a six month study. They took 30 children who all had terrible allergies. They had sneezing and itching and runny nose. They had problems with blowing into this peak respiratory flow machine. Um, they had nasal obstruction. Um, they also had elevated IgE, which is a marker that we use to test for allergies. And after the, within the six months, all of the kids had a reduction in sneezing, itching, runny nose, nasal obstruction. Uh, 13 of the 30 kids had a complete reduction in IgE and inosophils, which is another marker that we use for allergies. And Modigar comes in two forms. It comes in capsules and it comes in a very yummy grape chewable that is sweetened with xylitol, which is also good for remineralizing dental cavities. So it's good for your teeth as well. Uh, you won't find gummies in this product line. And uh, my daughter's company, Kid Star Nutrients, I should have said this at the beginning, is sponsoring this talk. And after I uh, sold my business to Jameson and they closed our office in Vancouver and we all left, um, she started her own company and Modicare is one of the products that she distributes through Kidstar Nutrients. She also has iron supplements, multivitamins, uh, fish oil, and uh, kids protein powders as well, which by the way, all of us adults take as well, especially the iron and the protein powder and the Modicare. So let's talk about some other things. So everybody who wants to prevent and treat their allergies will take three capsules of Modicare a day or three chewables. And when can kids start taking them? When they're very competent at chewing. So if you have a, a competent three-year-old uh, who is very good at chewing, they can start taking Modicare. Then um, I used to open up the capsules and put in my kids' uh, food when they couldn't uh, chew the, the tablets. Uh, additional allergy support. So you're going to take Modicare every day. And, you know, like I said earlier, the great benefits of Modicare is that you get all of the other immune balancing benefits that are so important. Then we want to take omega-3 DHA and EPA. So you can get that from fish oil. You can also get it from algae DHA for the vegetarians. You can also get it from ahi flower oil. Uh, the dosage for adults is about 2,000 milligrams a day, and the dose for kids is 1,000 milligrams a day. And at Kids Star Nutrients, they have these really awesome little round, um, what we call chewable poppers. Kids absolutely love them because when you pop them, they have a 
a yummy taste and it's kind of a sensory experience. Uh, you also want vitamin D3 and adults should be taking 2,500 IUs every day. Health Canada changed the daily amount of vitamin D3 to 2,500 IUs. So this is a very safe dose and children would take 1,000 IUs per day. And in the winter, I believe that people should double it because we are already vitamin D3 deficient and it takes quite a while, a long time to get your vitamin D3 levels up. You can get your vitamin D3 tested uh, at the doctor's office too. You also want to take vitamin C and things like vitamin A and zinc and selenium and B vitamins. And I think the best way to get all of those uh, to reduce histamine, remember histamine makes your eyes run, your nose run, everything gets itchy and swollen and just feels absolutely dreadful. Uh, so you want to take all of those in a multivitamin. And I have always been a fan of multivitamins. I think our foundation nutrients should be omega-3s, multivitamins, and probiotics. And we should take those every single day along with our Modicare. And those are the four that I would take every day, no matter what. Sometimes I take a lot of other things. Sometimes I get bored of that. But I always take the foundation nutrients and I think you should, and definitely your children should, because today, you know, think about how quickly our kids are growing and they tend not to eat what we want them to eat. So make sure you're getting a good multivitamin. And then one of the really special nutrients along with Modicare for allergies is quercetin. And quercetin is a flavonoid. It is found in berries, particularly raspberry, strawberry, blueberry, uh, Saskatoon berries, if you are someone who lives in the north or the prairies. Onions are a very high source of quercetin. And I love to make caramelized onions where you cook the onions until they're a really soft, spreadable mash. That's when the quercetin is really available. And black tea. And if you drink tea, you've got to have organic tea because tea is one of the most heavily sprayed uh, with fungicides. So make sure you're buying organic tea because it won't be. So the way quercetin works is it works very much like the other supplements to inhibit histamine release. Um, it controls those mast cells who are dumping out tons of fluid and agents to make us feel just miserable. And in asthmatics, quercetin was actually found to improve airway um, opening. So the supplement dose, if you're an adult and you're going to take the supplement, is 500 milligrams a day. And if you've got kids, make sure that they're eating lots of berries. And, you know, as we move into berry season and they're fresh, buy lots of them and freeze them. And thankfully, uh, stores like Costco now have huge bags of frozen organic uh, fruit for us to take. The probiotic that you want to take is called Lactobacillus salivarius LS01. This one is specifically for eczema, allergies, and asthma. So I would take that one along. But this is really the key. If you are an allergy sufferer and you would like them to go away permanently, this is what you want to take. And, you know, yes, you can use rescue, rescue uh, antihistamines if needed, but I can guarantee you that if you start this uh, within a couple of months, you're going to notice such a dramatic change in your allergies. You won't be blowing your nose as much. You won't have that annoying rhinitis. I remember my grandma used to always have a whole sleeve full of Kleenexes because she had allergic rhinitis, that chronic, constant drippy nose, which is embarrassing on top of being annoying. So definitely get on this allergy program. I think you'll be uh, extremely happy. So for those of you, and thank you, everybody, you all stayed on for the entire talk. Um, thank you for attending this evening. And there's a code. So the code is Lorna. And this code will give you free shipping and 15% off at Kidstar Nutrients. Um, so I'm going to answer some of the questions now. I also want you to know that I have a new website. It's lornahealth.com. I have an online newsletter, so go and sign up for that. You can also follow me on social media at Facebook and Instagram at Lorna Vanderhaeg. 
If you want to see more about Modicare, uh, go to Modicare.com. All the research is posted there. And if you have questions or you want to place an order, Kidstar does um, direct to consumer. They also are available in a lot of health food stores across the country, um, as well as Loblaws and some other grocery stores. But this particular code you can use at Kidstar Nutrients at their online store and you get free shipping as well. And so now I'm going to answer uh, some of the questions this evening. So how long can you take Modicare? Um, well, I think now I've been on it since 1998, so a long time. And you want to take it a long time because think about that. You know, if your immune system is like this, which mine would be because I... I'm constantly in this kind of elevated cortisol state and I want to have my cortisol come down and my DHEA go up and DHEA is your anti-aging hormone. And, you know, in Canada, we can't buy DHEA. It's very difficult to get. You have to get a prescription from your doctor. And here's a great way to bring cortisol, your stress hormone down and very nicely bringing your DHEA up which then helps you prevent cancers. I mean, we're all about preventing disease. That's really what the basis of nutritional medicine is all about, is getting your body to do the job that it's designed to do, which is fighting viruses, bacteria, protecting you against cancer, letting you live a long time. You know, I don't know what your goal is, but I'd like to make it to at least 100, maybe 105. And I wanna be healthy and fit and not be on, you know, five prescription drugs like the average 60 year old. So you can take Modicare every day for the rest of your life, just like you take vitamin D every day for the rest of your life and a good multivitamin. And then make sure you eat good food. Really, we've just got to start eating more fruits and vegetables. Make sure we're getting lots of good guys in our gut and variation in your diet. You know, if you're the person who eats broccoli every day and never varies, that's not a good thing either. We want to have variety in our food sources so that our digestive tract and our immune system um, really makes us stronger and more fit. So I'm going to scroll up here and see what age of kids. So um, for vitamin D, that should be at birth. Um, mom, pregnant mom should take vitamin D and also omega-3s when they're pregnant. So they have super smart babies with a good immune system. Then when your baby is born, they should go on vitamin D3 and omega-3s. And at Kids Star Nutrients, they even have iron supplements for babies when they're born. One of the things I didn't talk about was that if you're iron deficient, your immune system doesn't work well either. And check out your kids and your grandkids. If they have those dark circles under their eyes, and when you pull their eyelid down, if it's pale, should be nice and bright and red. That's telling you that your kids got a good quality iron level in the body. If mom was deficient in iron when she was pregnant, then absolutely that baby is born deficient. And so when you go onto the Kids Star website, you'll see they have a spray, vitamin D3, which kids love to use. They have fish oil. They have this um, baby drops of iron right up to adults. So there's lots of variation to pick as well. But for kids, uh, they'll start taking Modicare when they can chew or you can open up the Modicare capsules uh, into their food. And let me see what else we have for question wise. Oh, coconut oil, yeah. Um, DHEA, oh, very good, very good point. So DHEA is a hormone. So on the hormone chart, DHEA is what we call a mother hormone. And DHEA is broken down into other hormones, one of them being progesterone, which then progesterone becomes testosterone, and then testosterone becomes estrogen. And so DHEA is so key. And if you think about it, um, autoimmune diseases are more common in women and vitamin D3 deficiency is more common in women. And so we see a lower level of vitamin D3, our immune system doesn't work as well. So we definitely wanna take um, vitamin D3, which will 
and Modicare. So the Modicare is going to bring up your DHEA, which is great naturally, not synthetic with any kind of uh, replacement hormone. And let me talk about this. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about with sunburn, because this is interesting, um, you need to make vitamin D3 on your skin. Most of us are not doing that. And especially today, you see with kids, everybody is just packing on the sunscreen. Uh, one of the interesting studies that I read around this whole thing around vitamin D3 and allergies, I found this really interesting study where it said when people wear sunglasses outdoors, this actually inhibits your brain from starting the process to make melanin, which is the protective layer that you see on your skin. And so people burn more often. And what they said is when you go outside, wait about 15 minutes so that your eyes can detect the, the sunlight before you put on your sunglasses so that your body starts to make melanin. And, you know, I, I know how important vitamin D3 is. I have a family history of breast cancer. My grandmother died from it. So I know that one of the nutrients that is absolutely key for breast cancer prevention and colon cancer prevention is vitamin D3. So I will always take a supplement of vitamin D3 because it's not something you can get from a food source. Uh, but interestingly enough, you know, we've made the sun out to be a villain. We need to have a little bit of sun and it also makes us feel good. That's the other thing. So maybe when you go outside, don't put your sunglasses on for 15 minutes and that'll help your body produce more melanin in your skin to protect you. What about taking OJ when you have a cold? Well, orange juice is fine. Um, you know, if you're hopefully drinking unsweetened orange juice or freshly made orange juice, so you get some vitamin C. Remember, a lot of our um, oranges now are picked almost green and then shipped to us in um, trucks. So they don't often get to really fulfill their vitamin C level. Uh, fruit juices without eating the pulp have a lot of sugar in them. So you want, just want to make sure that you know, if you're going, if you're doing a lot of fruit juices that you eat the pulp as well. So when I used to make fruit juices in my champion juicer, I would always take the pulp and throw it in um, muffins and spaghetti sauce and other things so that we got the benefit of the fiber, which is the prebiotic, which feeds your probiotics in your digestive tract. Um, what kind of probiotic could work for a one-year-old baby with cow's allergy? So that probiotic I was talking about is sold under the name Biffy Baby, and it is Lactobacillus salivarius LSO1, and it is the probiotic that you could give to infants. There are other probiotics that you can give to infants as well. Um, I'm sure Caitlin remembers the name of the one, BioGaia, that she gave to all of her kids. Uh, that's another wonderful one. And, you know, there are now alternatives to cow's milk. And remember, we, if you look at the Canada Food Guide, they don't recommend drinking cow's milk anymore. So that was, you know, an old recommendation that they don't do anymore because there's a whole host of issues surrounding that, which um, will incite a lot of questions. So I probably won't go into it. But cow's milk is for baby calves. It is not for humans. And we really should be looking at alternatives um, for cow's milk and what the Canada Food Guide, which I was so happy when they changed that, um, they said drink water. And I went, yay, that's what we should be doing. So uh, eat lots of good food, uh, drink water. That would be my recommendation. But the probiotics for kids um, are available in these little drops. So BioGaia and Biffy Baby are both available in drops that you can give to newborns. So if you have anyone whose child has terrible colic, when they're first um, born or in the first few weeks, they need to take BioGaia. Bio it's an absolutely wonderful uh, probiotic for kids. So what kind of health issues could be caused by mold in the house? Oh my. Oh, we have people who have brain fog. They have digestive problems. They have, they have like a syndrome that feels like chronic fatigue syndrome, but it's not. Um, people get joint pain. Uh, mold is a very serious allergy. So 
Um, I know in Southern California or in California, they tend to have a lot of mold problems. And one of my friends developed a very serious brain problem uh, that they linked back to the fact that the house was so full of mold. And once he moved, um, his brain issues disappeared. So mold is very, very bad. What is the cause of a baby to um, develop eczema? Uh, it is their gut microbiome, especially in newborns. If you have a newborn who um, suddenly gets eczema right away, this is probably an indicator that they did not get the benefit of a good healthy microbiome from the mom. We often see this in cesarean deliveries because when a baby comes out the birth canal, the vagina is full of good bacteria for that baby. And uh, smart midwives and some very smart um, obstetricians now when they deliver babies by cesarean will actually swab the inside of the vagina and make sure that the baby gets that in their nose and their mouth because it is so protective for building the microbiome. So if you have an infant with eczema, and like I did, the two things that you want to use is the probiotics to get their guts building a really, really good, beautiful microbiome and also a fatty acid called GLA. And I rubbed the GLA on um, my daughter's belly. And when she got older, I put it into her food. But definitely you want to look at that. So it's, uh, and you know, breastfeeding is really recommended whenever you can. I know there's scenarios when people can't, but I just believe that every grandma and every sister and every friend should be supporting young moms to breastfeed because it is so key for developing a healthy immune system in the baby. So thanks a lot for that question, um, Lydia. Actually, I think that, you know, when we look at diseases that are happening to people as they age, what we really have to understand is if we started as kids and our kids were on a good multivitamin and a, a DHA supplement for developing a healthy brain and they took probiotics and they had Modicare, can you imagine? Because they just don't eat the way you want them to. They don't eat all those vegetables we want them to eat. They don't like to eat a lot of meat. They love to have pasta and white sauce. That is their favorite food. And I can tell you, if you have a child who is a pasta lover, they are getting nutritionally deficient because they are growing way faster than you and I are. They need way more nutrients than we do. So I think I have answered most of the questions that came up. Can secondhand cigarette smoke also cause eczema? Well, it can cause a whole host of things. I, I wouldn't doubt that it has a negative effect on the skin. And, you know, we just know that secondhand smoke for family members and especially children is really quite dangerous. So, and um, I think we're good. I think oh. that we have answered most of the questions. Did I get There's one on? more, one more question just came through at the bottom there. Okay. Okay, what do you think about DHA, which has made it a pharmacy, which also supplies me with bioidentical hormones? Oh, I think it's great. Uh, I mean, if you're going to use bioidentical hormones, especially in a postmenopausal woman, um, or some men also take DHEA, what you want to do is have a DHEAS. They put a little S on the end, that's a blood test. And you want to make sure you actually need DHEA. And then the next thing is, you don't need a lot. You know, I take five milligrams of DHEA every few days. So you don't need a lot to keep your DHEA levels balanced. And if you take Modicare, then you even need less of the hormone DHEA. So that's a great question. <clears throat> and what other products are available to help with osteoporosis? <coughs> Well, I actually deleted my osteoporosis slide because I was only allowed to talk about allergies. But I want to tell you that they now call osteoporosis immunoporosis. So they now know that it is not that calcium miraculously flies out of your bones as you age. That is not what's going on. It's inflammation that is causing your bones to break down faster than they are built up. So we now call osteoporosis immunoporosis. 
And what should you take for that? Modicare, vitamin K2, MK7, vitamin D3, and magnesium bisglycinate. And I'll say it again. So Modicare, vitamin D3, vitamin K2, MK7. So that's vitamin K2, MK7. And oh, I forgot biosil also. So that's a choline stabilized orthosilicic acid along with magnesium bisglycinate. And yes, men need Modicare too. The whole family, everybody from the time they can chew right up until we become angels. Everybody needs it. So, oh, you have a quick question about adenoids. So a lot of people have their used to have their adenoids and their tonsils out. You've noticed that that rarely happens anymore. And that's because we now know that the adenoids and the tonsils are part of your immune system. And they actually help to filter all the things that come into the body. So it's rare, uh, unless there are a lot of really big problems with the tonsils and the adenoids for them to be removed these days. Anyways, I know some people want to get home to their children. Uh, go to kidstarnutrients.com, um, use the code Lorna. Uh, you get free shipping and 15% off. Please sign up for my newsletter. Uh, I would really love to communicate with you again. And um, this code is available for a couple of days. So you don't want to miss out on the opportunity. And thank you to Caitlin at Kidstar Nutrients. That's my daughter, who is also doing lots of talks <laughs> these days on kids and um, kids nutrition. So take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Great time. Thank you, Bye. Lorna. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody.